Today I'll be changing the transmission fluid on a second gen Ford Escape. This also applies to the Mercury Mariners and Mazda Tribunes of the same generation. I am working on a V6, so the sizes and placement of things might be slightly different, but the procedure is the same. The transmission filters on these cars are non-serviceable. You'd have to split open the transmission and take a bunch of parts out to get to it. So Ford's service manual recommends draining and refilling the fluid three times. This job is really simple. It's more time consuming than anything else. I'd give yourself a full afternoon especially with the procedure I went through, little different than what Ford wrote down, but I think it ended up being better in the end. I've done this on other cars where you drain the transmission fluid, put in a cheap filter, cheap fluid, run it for a little bit, and then drain that, put in high quality filter, high quality fluid. Because you can't fully drain the transmission or change the filter on this, I chose to use the same fluid for all three drain and fill procedures. Because of that, this was a little pricier than using some cheaper fluid, but I'm hoping it's better overall because then I drained out the old Ford fluid, I put in this new fluid, and I kept things as consistent as possible. I chose to use this Valvoline ATF, it was available at Advanced Auto Parts, and it seemed like a good choice. If you are going to do it three times, you need 15 quarts of trans fluid. The capacity for the transmission is 9 quarts, but only 4.5 to 5 come out when you drain it. 10 mil socket, 11 mil socket, extension, ratchet, vice grips, and a funnel. In order to access the transmission drain plug, you have to remove this splash pan or lower belly pan. And my plan was to remove this bolt here and then two in the front and that would get it out of the way enough. When I got to the second bolt, the one in the front of the car, it actually broke. And broke that bolt. I didn't want to risk breaking any more bolts and so that's why I just took the vice grips and bent the pan out of the way, clamped it to the subframe and it was all good. The drain plug uses an 11 mil socket and it should come out pretty easy. This one's rusted as you can see and as everything else is on this car, but because the plug is inside the transmission it wasn't rusted into there at all. I read online that only about 4.5 quarts drain out when you drain the transmission and it was pretty accurate. I drained it into this bottle to check and yeah, between 4 and 4.5 four and quarts, so that's all you really have to add back. Once it's done draining, go ahead and reinstall your drain plug and then we can add more transmission fluid back. The new fluid is added right through the dipstick tube, so just pull your dipstick out, put this funnel in, and then pour just shy of five quarts in there, you know, whatever came out. Because you're adding the fluid through the dipstick tube, you're not going to get an accurate reading if you go to check the level. This isn't a huge deal because, again, we know that just shy of five quarts came out, and depending on the procedure you're going to follow, you're only going to drive it around the block or just idle it in your driveway between changes, so it's not a huge deal if you don't get an accurate reading for these intermediate changes. At this point, start the car and you can do one of two things. The Ford manual recommends that you just run it for three minutes and cycle the gears, shut it off, drain the fluid. What I did was I drove it around the block. I changed the fluid with the car warm, just like I would with engine oil, but it had cooled off a little bit, so I essentially just drove the car around the block, let the car warm up, shift through the gears itself, brought it back, cycled the transmission, and then drained it. I do recommend doing it two more times. I did notice a difference in the color of the fluid coming out of the transmission each time, so that's a good sign. I did notice a huge difference in shifting as well. At the beginning of the video, you can see it slam into gear, and that's honestly the worst it's probably ever done, but it would do that on the two to three shift until the car was at full operating temp. Once it reached operating temp, it would still do this thing where the RPM would raise just a little bit, and then it would upshift, where now it doesn't do that. You can see in the video now, it just shifts into the higher gear like it should, revs drop, and it shifts really smooth. When I've done this procedure on other cars, what I've done is change the fluid and filter once, drive it for a couple hundred miles, and then do it again, and that shows a huge difference. Again, I'm following the Ford procedure here, did it three times. I may change the fluid one more time. At the time of posting this video, I haven't really put enough miles on the car to do that yet. I want to put a few hundred miles on the car, and then maybe do another change, just one final one to flush out anything else that might be in there and just really get new fluid in. If I actually end up doing that final fluid change, I'll leave a comment or post something in the description, maybe both. I'll let you guys know. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them below. Also, if you have experience with this transmission or a similar transmission, let me know your procedure of how you got it to shift better. Other viewers would love to see it as well, I'm sure. Anything to get these cars to shift just a little better and not that awful slamming into gears. Please don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching everybody.